Hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the brake pads and discs on a 1992 MX-5 Miata. So first, after you take the wheel off, what we want to do is go ahead and locate this rubber boot here. Now above that is, if I can get the camera to focus, is these two bolts. Now the one above can be just cranked loose with a 14mm socket and once you've done that it should be finger loose just to undo now after you remove that there should be inside there a little key like this it can be undone with a size 4 allen key and what this basically does is a little key to uh, basically undo and push back the piston on the caliper um, now once you've got this out, uh, what you want to do is just make sure that all of the teeth are sort of, you know, healthy and damaged at all. And um, make sure there's plenty of grease in the little flutes in between. Once that's been taken out and you've undone that, you can then go ahead and take this boot off the bottom of the caliper to expose this 10mm bolt. Now that can be undone with a, I found it much easier to use a spanner um, and just sort of kick it down uh, and undo it completely. It should come out to about here to which you can then just pull it straight out. As you can see it's uh, done until about there, you can then just give it a wiggle and it should come straight out. So now once that's out you can then pull this caliper up and remove the sliding pin by just pushing it back. Tricky to do with one hand, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, should pop straight off, exposing these pads, which really have had their day, and these little clips as well. Now, if your car is the same as mine, uh, these clips should sit there and on the outside there this one won't sit straight unless it's got the pads in already what we can then go ahead and do is remove the brake disc now my one one side was completely loose and okay and this side isn't loose and okay so I'm going to do this, grab the trusty hammer and just give it a good smack, which should loosen it up to the point where you can remove it. I think this one may be slightly seized, so I'll give it a good hit and I'll be back in a sec. Now this one really took a good smack to make it come loose, but once it's loose it should just come straight off, exposing the hub and my absolutely fucked brake disc sort of protector which I uh, am not sure if you can actually replace but that's just tough tits what you can then go ahead and do is chuck on your new brake disc which should go straight on there which is a bit tricky to do with one hand Again, there you go, just like that, which already makes the car look a lot nicer. Once you've done that, you can then pop these clips, like I was saying before, back onto the car. Um, they go on just like this, so the little sort of spiky clip thing is on the outside on both the bottom and the top. Now once they're on, as you can see, it holds these pins, the top and the bottom one on, and they sit just like that, as you can see, the uh, the brake pad sort of clings onto them, and they can, oh, they are still free to move around, uh, sort of forward and back, but they, they, uh, they do just sit like that, and you can let it go, rather than falling off. Now the next bit's pretty crucial. Uh, 
these clips can be bought from eBay really, really cheap, but they are definitely, definitely worth having. Um, they fit in just like that. They have a little hoop which sort of sits behind the uh, the uh, sharp piece here. They sit behind there and the two clips fit in the gaps between the pads. Now these are standard pads, so these work. They probably wouldn't work with uh, sort of yellow stuff or green stuff, whatever you buy from the EBC or something. They might not fit, but these are pretty standard pads, so they fit. And what they basically do is keep a constant gap between the pad and the disc while it's spinning to stop any nasty sounds while you're driving. Um, I found out the hard way that they were necessary on the front when I drove it just to make sure they were okay because it was catching on the discs badly, so they're definitely worth having. So once they're both fitted, they should look like that. Obviously, there's quite a large gap between the disc and the pad, but uh, that's not a big deal because obviously once the caliper's fitted, that squeezes the gap a lot tighter, but just keeps a slight distance from the pad and the disc once the brakes are not applied. Before you go ahead and put the top boot on the slider pin and fit the caliper back on, just make sure that the uh, little key you've used to undo the piston is the pistons undone completely, as obviously these di uh, these pads are a lot thicker than the ones I had on before because they were worn. Um, it just saves a lot of time and hassle, so just make sure the uh, yeah, once you've undone them and the pistons right back, you can then slide the caliper back on um, and fit these. So to say, even if you do pull the Allen key out just to check how far the piston's gone in and the key comes out with it. Don't worry, uh, the key will come out once it's loosened slightly, so you can pop the key straight back in and keep loosening it um, until you've got the piston right back in to then fit over the pads. The whole process is slightly hard to film on your own while doing it, but uh, yeah, so once you've popped the, it back on the side of the pin and sort of held these pads together with the clips in, um, obviously making sure the piston's all the way back out, you can then slide it straight on, and once it is on, it does hold everything together, and nothing comes out. Once you've done that, you can then re replace the 10mm uh, bolt you've got for the lower part of the caliper in there. Uh, just make sure you put a lot of grease on this, because this one was an absolute bastard to undo, so just make sure you cover it in grease, uh, just for next time. You never know, it might be you, it might be someone else. Once that's done back up, you can then replace it, uh, you can then pop the rubber boot back on that you took off earlier, just to keep it protected, make sure it uh, doesn't get loads of mud in these bushings here, just keep it nice and tight. Now the next part's quite important, what you want to do is make sure your handbrake is off completely, all the way down off, and uh, then you want to replace this, put it back in and start tightening it up. Now, the sweet spot, keep tightening up until you cannot turn this. So it's obviously quite easy to turn now. You want to use both hands to try and turn it, and once you can't turn it, you want to then back it off half to three quarters of a turn, just so you get the feel of where it bites. So as you can see now, I cannot move this disc at all. It will not move. It's nice and tight. Um, now you want to do just back off that Allen key, just a uh, about three quarters of a turn, loosening it, and you'll be able to find that you can spin this. And this was half a turn. Um, I feel like this is probably enough. I mean, it will wear down slightly on here once you start moving. So I mean, I should think half a turn for me anyway. It's plenty. And then finally, before popping the wheel back on, what you do is get this 14 mil back on that Allen key uh, place there. That should be pretty loose. Just finger tight that. And then just give it one crank with the socket. And um, that's pretty much it guys. Just uh, make sure you uh, just take out the road and back. Check your handbrake as well. Um, another thing, just a tip to do. Uh, make sure you always uh, before doing anything with the piston or taking out with the allen key make sure you relieve the pressure in the line by removing the cap uh, for the brake fluid reservoir under the bonnet 
um, because that will stop. Obviously, that allows the uh, the fluid to go somewhere once you're um, backing the piston out. Um, but apart from that, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Drive safe, and I'll see you soon.